Back now at 614 this morning, we're following up with former CBS News anchor Dan Rather and his challenge to teachers across Texas to come up with innovative ways to improve education in the state. Katie Landa Verde is the winner of this year's Rather Prize with her plan to improve education. Good morning, both of you. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Good morning. It. Thank Thanks you. for having us this so, morning. So, Katie, since you're the winner, we want to start with you. Tell us what your plan is. Um, so the plan is to implement morning workshops for um, our elementary students. And um, these workshops will be led by community members, um, our own teachers, and primarily by our high school students. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that any sort of topic they could be interested in, correct? Absolutely. These are of any topic that um, kids might be interested in um, of, their, of their own choosing. Yeah, so that way it's not being forced on them. They're exactly. choosing. So, Dan, what was it about this idea that attracted you and won her the $10,000 prize? Well, first of all, I'd make it clear that neither I nor anybody in our family actually made the decision. Okay. We have a process, including the advisory board. But what I like about this idea is, first of all, I really love the part of it where, say, seniors in high school, juniors in high school can be helping elementary students follow their curiosity, mm -hmm. follow their passion. The second thing I like about it, it can be implemented anywhere. It doesn't take a lot of money. In fact, mm -hmm. it takes almost none to implement this particular project. So often we find things that improve schools. Well, somebody says, how are you going to finance it? So this is low cost, if any cost. So those are among the two things I liked about it. The main thing I liked about it is the teacher came up with an idea. Yeah. So Katie, you're up in Dallas. Have you guys started doing this yet, or is it still in the plan? Um, we, well, we just, we just won the prize yesterday. <laughs> oh, um, good point, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're, we're in the early um, implementation stages, and, and we're really excited to roll this out um, really, really quickly. And so how quickly do you think it can happen? Um, well, we're hoping to start it this coming school year, the that, beginning of the year. That's fantastic. It's yeah. really great. And, and Dan, while I have you here, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up um, questions about our current um, political climate and the and the relationship between the media and the president. There have always been squabbles between the two. But is, is this what we're seeing right now any different than what you saw during your career? Well, it is. The press's job, of course, is to be aggressive. Yeah. The press's job is to knock on doors and say, what's going on in there? Because news is what people need to know that some powerful person doesn't want them to know. That's news. <laughs> Most of the rest is commercial propaganda. But I do think for this early in the presidency, we've never had this poisonous an atmosphere. Naturally, people are going to say I'm biased, but I think the burden is on the president because he, from the beginning, is believed it's to his benefit to attack the press and to attack our standards of freedom of the press. But I do think, as, a, as I say, early in the presidency, we've never had it this, this bad. Mm -hmm. In the Nixon administration, late in his second term during the Watergate period, but you know, we're still what less fewer than two months into this presidency. And I do, you know, I'm sad for the country. I, I really detest, I hate what's happening. Mm -hmm. But uh, when people say the press is unfair to the president, they say, look, accuracy and the truth are never unfair. <laughs> and it's also what's fair to the American people, not just what's fair to the president. But you know, we're, as you know, we make our mistakes. We're not perfect. Yeah. Journalism it can't do it perfectly. We've heard the president, a lot of conservatives, say that this president is treated differently than President Obama was. Based on what you've seen from coverage, is that the case in your opinion? Well, of course it is. It's different with every presidency. President is he unfairly treated? President Obama treated the press and First Amendment in a different way. President Obama had a different uh, approach to the office. But I defy anyone to say that over the length and breadth of his uh, two terms that President Obama wasn't under almost constant attack. And I, I understand that, I, and I have nothing against people who voted for Trump. I'm, I'm from these people, if yeah. you will. I understand. And I don't argue with anybody's vote. I do, th do think that you have to see each presidency in itself to say, well, President Obama, in the early stage of his presidency, didn't get as rough a treatment of the press. He didn't treat the press the way that President Trump has done so. He hasn't broken the norms of such things as, frankly, telling the truth, I don't. Well, Mr. Rather and Katie, thank you so much, thank especially you for, for your great us. idea. I can't wait to see how this all works out. You guys are also going to be doing some South by Southwest stuff as well. Uh, I will be doing. Katie's yeah. got to go back to work and teach school. <laughs> got to actually, got to actually teach some kids. Yeah, right? I got to go teach. Well, Katie, it's a great idea, and thank you for coming down here. We appreciate thank you it, for Mr. Rather. Thank, thank you so much as well. Too. Thank you. Take right. care of yourself.